What's up, y'all? I got a family to feed, so let's get into this tea. We are um, here to react to your favorite paralegal, y'all. She's at 773 subscribers. If we could get her to 1,000, that would be great. Now, however, she is not pressed to be the biggest YouTuber out there. She just want to go with the flow, so I just want to put that out there. Um, but we just here to talk about uh, Krishan versus James Wright case. And I want y'all to know that I'm so happy a paralegal is here in the presence because I need to word things correctly so I don't word them wrong. Because whether y'all agree or not, that's fine. But I at least want to have some substance with my words, okay? And not that I'm out here giving misinformation, but it's better to, like, know verbatim what's going on. So kind of want to break this down. She already broke it down. So y'all make sure y'all tap in. She is on the line. Say, hey, Cassandra. What's good, y'all? This is her. So, yeah, y'all just make sure y'all tap in. So we're about to get into it. She, You are going to hear yourself, but it'll be all right. And at some point, I'm going to go pee because I got to pee right now. And I should have just went, but we are here. Let's get into it. Based off of the officer um, contacting each witness and including the victim, Mr. James Wright. And uh, let's see. I have to kind of redact some things. All right. So as you can see, we know the incident happened on uh, November 10th. He reported it on November 11th. 11-11 um, in the chat. And when you're dealing with criminal cases, there there is going to be some delay um, because you have to contact, you know, you have to pretty much get the story from the victim and any witnesses um, there there is. So I'm not surprised at the date of the report only because they had to track down witnesses, get their information. And normally, like for me, if I call a client or I call a witness, it's about a good day or two that they get back with me um, only because they're busy. Um, and I'm pretty sure if these folks are in the entertainment industry, then they have busy lives. So you have to take all of those things into consideration. So the date of the report um, is 1120. And that is probably the date that um, he got all the information. Um, the report was made and it was sent over to the supervisor for approval, only how it works. Um, so this particular type of report that was um, was made was a battery report. Um, and the witnesses was Mr. Christopher Sibley and Robert Hatchard. Um, I, their date of birth and phone numbers were... Wait a minute. It's two people? Oh, the witnesses. Okay. Listed, and I just yeah, wanted witnesses. to take the liberty out to um, redact those because I don't want anybody calling and harassing people. So pretty much the crime summary um, says victim is a senior entertainer with a large following on social media. Suspect is a rapper, reality personality, and entertainer with an entertain. I'm sorry, <laughs> Instagram social media following of 5.4 million people. Suspect is referred to her by her stage name, Krishan Rock. Victim participated in a music tour performance at 800 West Olympic. Suspect was invited by headliner Tamar Braxton of the tour to participate during a dance segment at the concert. Suspect later became involved in a dispute with other performers and tour staff members over not performing at her designated time. Amid the dispute, Suspect directed her anger toward Victim and requested that he confirm that he was that she was present but not notified to participate during the performance. Victim denied seeing Suspect at the designated time. So suspect became upset and used her right closed fist to punch victim twice on his nose and mouth causing pain, uh, causing a mouth causing complaint of pain and visible injury. He needs to rewrite this report. Okay. Suspect was wearing large rings on her right hand during the altercation. So based off of, you know, what we heard in the past, we know that there's some holes into the story. And you guys will a see lot. when we get to the actual civil complaint that was filed. So the detective, um, he completed his investigation on November 20th. He actually contacted uh, Mr. Wright on the 20th and advised him that the matters pertaining to the, uh, the investigation. Victim confirmed all statements that were taken and documented in an initial investigative report. Victim explained that he's a singer and was scheduled to perform during a one 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 in the chat concert. Suspect was also scheduled scheduled to participate in a twerk dance segment during the concert. Victim expressed that he never met Krishan. Prior to the night of the concert, but he has been aware of her celebrity status gain through music and throughout the past few years. Victim is also in the industry. Victim recalled observing sus suspect, aka Krishan, and I'm just going to use her names, um, inside one of the dressing rooms within the venue. Suspect appeared to be crying. Victim approached Krishan in an attempt to inquire why she was crying and attempted to console her. Mr. Wright informed Krishan that other people within the dressing room were lying and accusing her of, I'm sorry, <laughs> 
I need to go back to using victim and suspect. So okay. suspect, which was Krishan, informed Mr. Wright that other people within the dressing room were lying and accusing her of not being present during the aforementioned twerk segment of the concert. Suspect began to argue with other people in the dressing room while requesting that victim confirm that she was near the stage at the time of the dance segment. Victim denied observing victim near stage. And that was actually supposed to say suspect. So pretty much what Krishan did uh, was like... Who wrote this? I mean, was this the... Um the police or did this is the witness statement <laughs> that that's actually the freaking detective and you'd be surprised how many police reports i purchased that are incorrect this is bad <laughs> he fucked this all up um kia the noise you can hear i believe is her computer um so yeah we we just gonna listen to it um I'll talk to you about how we can fix the sound. Was saying, hey, didn't you see me, you know, present? And he pretty much said, no, I didn't see you near the stage. And then suspect became upset and continued to request that victim confirm that she was near the stage at the time of the performance. Suspect further denied seeing her during the segment. So pretty much what this paragraph is saying that he approached Krishan because she seemed upset. She was crying. Um, she thought she was supposed to uh, perform. Um, or be present for that twerk segment, but we all know that she was supposed to perform, but that's neither here nor there. Okay. And so Krishan was asking him, like, hey, tell everybody you've seen me on stage, like I was near the stage, and he kept denying that he saw her near the stage. Suspect began, became enraged and subsequently used her right closed fist to punch victim on his nose, causing visible injury. Suspect then punched victim a second time off, breaking one of his uh, front, front teeth. Victim believed that suspect punched him with her right close fist because he recalled observing several large rings on her right hand and before and after the incident. Victim expressed that the large rings resembled championship style rings. The officer then telephoned the first witness, Mr. Christopher Sibley, on November 20th at approximately, what is that, 220, and advised him about matters pertaining to this investigation. Christopher recalled entering a dressing room at the Novo with, the, with victim and observing Krishan and other performers and tour staff having a discussion. The concert headliner inquired as to why a suspect, a.k.a. Krishan, wasn't present for a segment of the concert. Suspect became argumentative, expressing that no one came to get her. Tamar inquired about the miscommunication. Victim expressed that he attempted to find suspect but did not see her near the stage at the time of the performance. Suspect became upset while denying that she was called on perform. Suspect became enraged and shouted, say it again. Victim began to further deny observing suspect near the stage when sus uh, sus suspect subsequently used her right closed fist to punch him on his nose and mouth approximately four times causing visible injuries now it's this is, is as we all know four times i thought it was two times okay so that krishan was supposed to get ready that's this is the day that she was online with us when carlissa actually um came to her house to see Junior. So it, it's just kind of weird. We, so she said she was ha she had to get ready. Tamar was actually in her live. First of all, she was rushed, number one. Second of all, that is when Carlissa just popped up at her house. Uh, and third of all, she was rushed again. Like, I, I, r no, rushed, begged, okay? And, yeah. um, mm -hmm. and I mean, just, I, I feel as though she was all over the place quite frankly. And I feel like she felt like she was doing Tamar a favor. So she decided to go when she definitely shouldn't have gone. She was not in the right state of mind. I feel like. I I'm saying, hey, you know, yeah. I'm getting ready you need to hurry up. So on and so forth. So Krishan honestly thought that she was supposed to perform. We all seen it. If he was on that live. Christopher explained that the punches were so quick that he was unable to accurately determine how many times the suspect punched victim, but was adamant that he was punched multiple times. Christopher Punches immediately so left the room. Quick. I victim. thought it was four times. I'm bleeding profusely from his nose and mouth and stood outside the dressing room in the hallway area. Christopher observed staff members request that law enforcement be notified. Christopher also recorded suspect exiting the dressing room approximately five minutes after the incident occurred. Is that in the, um, not let her stay for five more minutes. It, is it a video that we're going to be able to see? No, we're not going to have access to that unless they release it. Ah, uh, okay. All right. I provided Christopher a link to evidence.com to upload the video. A video and observed su suspect sitting what appeared to be a dressing room while saying what sounded like I'll slap that ninja anytime. <laughs> 
Now, this, unfortunately, I don't think we are ever going to get that video unless somebody releases that video. So right now, that is going to be included in the discovery phase. Uh, the officer contacted witness two, which was a tour manager, a.k.a. Mr. Robert Hatcher, also on November 20th, and advised him of the matters pertaining to the investigation. Robert confirmed both um, statements from James as well as from Christopher and provided no further information. He identified Robert as an additional witness while conducting the investigation. Victim provided several photos of his injuries and a video of him receiving medical treatment via evidence.com. Uh, so will we be able to see that? Unless they release it. Ah, uh, same thing. Okay. The officer reviewed the photographs and observed scratches and abrasions on victim's nose, a swollen upper lip, and abrasions in chipped tooth, um, a chipped left front tooth. Victim was medically treated at an ER after the incident. Victim had to have his embedded nose ring removed, and it is scheduled to see a cosmic, um, cosmic, cosmetic. Oh yeah, a cosmetic surgeon and injuries okay. on his nose due to swelling. Victim also received dental treatment for damage to his teeth. Victim will provide medical documentation at a later date. So normally how this works um, with the silver portion of it, because this is a um, civil case, this is a personal injury case. How we do it is we have to, and I I work on a plaintiff side. So I would normally request medical records um, to one review them, but I will also request the medical bills because that is that determines, I don't want to say it determines how much they will get, but when we make a demand, we pretty much demand. And, and that you guys won't understand, but your medical bills are $10,000. We demand three times that much, but it's not saying that you are going to get that amount. So I'm not sure if, if he did, a, you know, if EMS came, if he had a hospital. So you demand, if it's 10,000, you demand 40,000? Well, three times that much. So yeah, so 10,000 times three will be 30,000. 30, and then they can add uh, what's called pain and suffering, which is like a couple of hundred or thousand dollars added to that. Okay. Okay. Total visit and he went I'm to- going the to the bathroom, two seconds, but this video is still gonna play. Dentist, I'm not in a, co you know, cosmetic surgeon, all that, all that, I, man, I would say it was roughly probably 25K. Um, and that's just an estimate. That's only an estimate, y'all. Um, but that's normally what you do in civil cases. You have to prove up your damages by submitting bills. If you paid for something, you have to submit tangible evidence showing that you spent money to get this situated and you're wanting to get that back from the party who's responsible plus pain and suffering. And you understand that once we get to the actual civil complaint. Uh, let's see. Victim identified suspect based on his knowledge of her celebrity status and social media following suspect is well in the entertainment industry he provided a photograph of suspect that was retrieved from a google image both witnesses also know suspected her sub, uh no, i can't even speak this morning due to celebrity status music career and large social media following christopher and robert are both staff members on tour and express having only met suspect during the incident i attempted uh to contact suspect using a phone number obtained through lapd resources the call was directed to voicemail but we all know Krishan don't check her voicemails. <laughs> so her, Child, none of us check our voicemail. Her voicemail box I know I don't. was full. And he was unable to obtain a statement from the suspect at the time, and his investigations was concluded. Suspect has made various statements through social media, Instagram, denying the allegations. Now, one thing that they are going to do is, and this is what I do. So for personal injury matters, it may be a car wreck, it may be a slip and fall, it may be wrongful, it may be a number of things, including this. Even on the criminal side, I am going to subpoena your social media. Uh, okay. All right. So I know what that means. That means you going to uh, go look at the social media. But when, but when you say subpoena, what does that mean? So subpoena means that it is a legal document telling an entity or a custodian of records that they have to give us the evidence or whatever we're requesting. Mm hmm or they're going to be held in contempt of court or fined or whatever the case may be. Okay. Um, and that's something that you would have done as the paralegal in this case, but did that not happen? Well, when I get into the case, I don't know. Well, see, Krishan was just served in May. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not sure if they filed the answer yet. I have to search that first. Okay. After they, she is, well, if she gets an attorney, they have to respond on her behalf. Mm -hmm. Once they file that answer, then they can go ahead and start requesting 
records, so medical records or any type of evidence such as social media, so on and so forth, and they have to voluntarily give that up. So in this case, Prashant has to voluntarily give her Facebook and Instagram information and all that other stuff. If she doesn't, then they can subpoena it. Okay. And if they do subpoena it, does that always go through? Or that's just like a... Hell, yes, it always goes through. Oh, okay. Because we... Yeah, so Facebook is meta. Uh, they do that in Instagram. So I pull all social media, including Snapchat. Damn. And word of advice, nothing is ever deleted. You can deactivate your account. And I will still get all of the information you have ever posted, deleted, commented, videos, everything. What? So be mindful what you put on your social media. Okay. Listen, my mama came to my social media <clears throat> when I first got on social media, obviously. When I became, we going to consider it an adult, 17, 18, whatever. And she kept telling me to stop venting on Facebook. And I was like, fuck that. I was all in my feelings about everything all the time. And she was like, stop doing that shit. I'm telling you. But she didn't say stop doing it because clearly they'd be able to, to subpoena your shit. But I'm glad she told me not to. Because you would say some dumb shit in your feelings. And then, boom, you going to jail. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, and it can be used against you, too. That's crazy. So you can't even delete the shit. That's crazy. Thank you. See, this is why we got to talk to paralegals and shit. Yeah, like, I don't care if you deactivate your page. I don't care if you delete everything off of your page. That's the first thing that I'm going to go to because we live in a day and time that people record any and everything on social media. Now, a lot of people, I shouldn't be saying this, <laughs> but a lot of people don't realize that it does not go away. You can delete stuff. All going to go to a big old cloud storage. Okay. Somewhere in Antarctica. <laughs> it's it's going to be stored somewhere. So just be mindful of what you put on your social media. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm pretty sure they're going to grab any and every video, social media pictures, and they're going to examine those. And they are, are going to present that to each, um, to the court. Well, I will say she denied it. She denied it all. She never came up there and said, yeah, I did. And what? She never said she did it. That is correct. You're right. That's crazy. That's probably uh, the first time she played her cards right in that area. <laughs> um, action taken. This is the big part. So the case was submitted to the district attorney for filing consideration. The district attorney at Adut, <laughs> the DDA, Adut, referred the case to the city's attorney's office for filing consideration on January 18th, 2024. So as you can see, this was just sent to the DA and the DA pretty much will determine whether or not they are going to take matters into their own hands and foul. Okay. Okay. So that's very, 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 very important right there. So this case was submitted to the district attorney's office for filing consideration. DDA, a do what, what is a dude? What is a what? A dude. No, that's, that's, that's their name. Ah, DDA Adut referred the <laughs> referred the case to the city attorney's office for filing considerate. Okay, okay. James made a report. Yeah, so the DDA the is the deputy district attorney. Okay. Okay. Officer conducted the investigation and then he went ahead and submitted this investigation to the district attorney's office, in which they reviewed everything that was provided. So the statements from the witnesses, the photos the videos in any Instagram um, statements. And then by them looking at that, that's how we are here today. Okay. With the civil matter. Well, with the criminal matter as well as the civil, uh, civil matter. Let me ask you this. How the hell did Woe Vicky, well, how was Woe Vicky able to take it to court without a video of showing that Krishan put hands on her, which I thought she didn't. Unless Zeus would have edited that out, but, or did she have video? Here is the funny thing. Any and everybody can file a lawsuit. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what it is. What happens is once that person gets served a copy of that lawsuit, 
it is up to them to answer and deny our allegations and then move forward to be dismissed. Okay. So, well, we, we, we know what happened because we've seen it. Right. But there's nothing that says that she can't go to the police department and file an investigation or file charges. They have to investigate it. So is that still even going on? I think it got quashed, if I'm not mistaken. I have to go back and check. But that case can, is nowhere to be found. Hmm. I can't even find it. And I'm good at my job. I can't even find oh, the case on the Maryland docket. Oh, okay. Just just slide it up. Um. Okay. Yeah, because I, I, didn't, I didn't know. Okay. Thank you. Criminal history. I'm much aware of Krishan's criminal history so anywhere she goes if there is a database that you can look up and see everybody's arrest dates criminal history well, that's all i'm gonna give you because i'm not gonna tell y'all what we use <laughs> um okay. so the suspect has been arrested in arizona for misdemeanor disorderly conduct fighting and criminal trespass she has a history out of oklahoma for felony arrest involving distribution of controlled substances aka mary jane okay it was mary jane nothing else and concealing a stolen vehicle suspect has arrested in okay Rome. so that is correct that did have something to do with the stolen vi uh, vehicle. She was not charged for the vehicle. It was just the Mary Jane and not having a medical card. You have to realize this is just a police report. Okay. That That's all it is. So he's probably going off of hearsay and all that other stuff. Just like he said, controlled substances. It's not a controlled substance. It's just simply Mary Jane. It's not any type of narcotics or, you know, that hard stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, that would that would depend on if they consider it uh, controlled in in that state, right? Well, it's the di it's different wording. It's different words that is used, and I I forgot what a, uh, they said it was, but it was controlled drugs, not a controlled substance. So, it, it, yeah, you have to go into the penal code to see exactly how they define that term. Okay. Okay. And for felony-related um, narcotic violations. And then case status, the investigation continued. So that brings us to, um, and this is just the investigative report. Let me see. So this, and this report was taken on November 11th, okay? So this was the report that James made. Um, and then the report that I just read was the investigator. So the officer had to contact the um, the witnesses, contact James Wright again, as well as to get in contact with, with Krishan. Are you using a mic or are you using your computer? No, I was just simply using my computer. Okay. Okay. I take pointers. Lead me in the right direction. No, I got you. I was just about to tell you when we get off here. I'm, I'm gonna tell you everything to get. Um. So the initial report that James made. I'm just going to um, read this portion because it's very important that you guys understand this before we get over to the complaint for the personal injury complaint. On November 11, 2023, my partner and I arrived on and spoke with the victim James Wright, who stated that on November 10th at approximately. 2315, which would have been what 1115. He was speaking, um, he was speaking with suspect who was later at ID as Krishan Malone, both performers at the venue. Okay, both performers at the venue. Mm. Performers. They probably consider that dancing as performing though. Uh -huh. <laughs> While they were speaking, Malone was asked by an unknown party if she had gone up on stage and performed. And she replied that she had. The person then asked the victim if the suspect had performed that night. The victim told the person that she hadn't. Malone became upset and continuously stated that she did say that, that she did perform. And I'm assuming that's supposed to say did not perform. The victim then turned his back and began to speak with someone, someone else. As he turned back around to face Malone, she sucker punched the victim with a closed fist, a closed right fist in his mouth and nose area. The victim stated that he doesn't know why she hit him and Malone was under the influence of alcohol and narcotics. How do you know this? Malone then left the location. Victim stated that he called for an ambulance and treated was at and was treated at the scene for a half inch laceration to his left nostril and chip left 
front too. The victim stated that Malone had a lot of rings on her hands, which caused the injury to his face. My partner spoke with, um, I think that was Christopher, so that was witness one whose statements matched that of the victim, um, saying that there was a dispute of performance, but stated that Malone hit the victim approximately four times with both fists. Now, as far as injuries that was reported on the scene, um, it's unknown. Uh, let me see. Unknown already cleared the victim prior to officer's arrival. So the, the, um, the ambulance pretty much cleared him. Um, and victim, James Wright, stated that he would seek his own medical treatment. They did note that he had a half, uh, half inch laceration to his left nostril and a chipped left front tooth. Now, the incident was recorded by the ICV and BW. V investigation are paraphrased by the investigating officers. Paraphrased statements do not contain the entire statements and are the officer's interpretation of the statement were activated during the incident and will be ready for review. So if they had their body more cameras, I'm pretty sure they can go back and um, just watch it and summarize. But just remember, this was the initial investigation. Um, not the initial investigation. I'm sorry. This was the initial report. So the and hell, Kershaw was gone by then anyway. I'm I'm also trying to figure out. I'm trying to ask the questions I know the people are gonna ask. Like, why would the security <laughs> company, which clearly you probably don't have the answer to, but why would the security company tell him that they can't call the police? Like, what is that about? That's a lot of questions I got. Yeah, that I don't know. And I mean, another thing, why would he even have to call them to tell them to call the police instead of either either him just calling the police or, you know, handling and handling it themselves as in the security? Hey, security, come get this person. Someone was just assaulted. That is a good question. And really, I'm actually doing a wrongful death case where the security company was there but somebody ended up passing away. Mm. If they had a good attorney, they could have sued the venue, Krishan, and the security company. Absolutely. Or maybe they wasn't trying to do all that. Nah, it's just given not having a good attorney because clearly they wanted mm -hmm. to sue. He wanted to sue. That's crazy. Okay. This was the day after the incident happened, um, which, which is crazy is he stated that he did not know why she punched him. Like he asked her this. So it, it never once mentioned what it mentioned in the 1120 report. Like he went in there, he seen that she was crying, upset. He tried to console her. But the day after you told a, a totally different. So it's like your, your story changed. So it went from you didn't know why she hit you, you know, blase, blase, blase. And then, you know, November 20th comes around and you say, oh, she was crying, so on and so forth. That's the whole point. That's why I keep saying their whole, everything wasn't making sense. That's why a lot of people wasn't believing them. Yeah. The, uh -huh. the, if, if plaintiffs, um, and on the personal injury side, um, they're really, really going to have, have to get their story straight in order for that civil case to go through. Now on the criminal side, I hope she has some darn good attorneys. Um, so they can pick this one by piece. Let me ask you this. The fact that he consoled her, and I'm only asking because that was my whole argument in the first place, because I do feel as though she is not somebody to console. Uh, not, in, let me take that back. Not in a situation like that. You know what I'm saying? They weren't being the nicest to her. It's all over the internet. They wasn't treating her, um, you know, like an, like an adult. And, and granted, outside of her actions of her drinking and things like that, I feel like from the beginning, they was just treating her like, oh, my God. You know how you have like a, it'll be 10 kids, but you got two of them that's just bad as hell. So everybody looking at the kids like, mm, she ain't raising them right, you know, but your kids acting right. I feel like that's how they was kind of treating her. So would she have an argument of the fact that he tried to console her? I'm just wondering. And that is probably why the battery charge was dropped mm -hmm. and she got probation because what happens is I don't know how to explain this in lamest terms but he touched her first mm -hmm. and that's like you inviting that person to touch you back 
You so know, I'm it's just like tripping. when we was in school and we have that, that person that be picking on us uh-huh. and your mama be like, wait till they hit you first. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's so, the best way to explain that. So I'm not tripping. This No, you're not. This, and I have done cases with that. Mm-hmm. This is what I've been trying to tell people the whole time and everybody think that I'm over here like, like, like people are really downplaying this whole consoling thing. But the problem is they weren't on her side, right? They did not like how she was acting, which they had every right to. I mean, she was, she was doing a lot, right? But if y'all already treating her like that, what in your right mind would make you think, let me hug on her? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> She's crying because of y'all. She's crying because y'all didn't hold up y'all end of the deal. Also, it wasn't communicating that once again is on Krishan's end. Cause before she came, she should have been like, what am I, what am I doing? Um, but in her defense, I just feel as though she was doing Tamar a favor. Like she'll say that, like, you know, everybody want my cloud. Tamar was asking me for whatever. So I was trying to look out, you know, it's a cocky thing to say, but that's how she feel. She that's her prerogative. But if people are acting like, like Tamar was, uh, not Tamar, T- Tony Braxton was looking at her like, girl, move. I don't want to touch you while we praying. You know what I'm saying? Um, even James at some point when she was out on the stage or whatever, he too was looking at her like, yeah, if somebody don't get this child off the stage, you know? So if all of y'all see it, what makes you think that person don't feel that? You know? I, I, I just you spoke nothing but facts. Yeah, like consoling her did not make sense to me. And I know people want to act like they have the biggest hearts in the world, but a lot of times niggas just being nosy, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Niggas but what's what's going on? Why she crying? Cause they want to be nosy, you know? And I'm just not on that side. Like, I just I still stand where he shouldn't have never touched her, but okay. Or consoled her or whatever. Cause you did say, is it in the is it in the report that he touched her? Well, he said they use the word console. Okay, I thought I was tripping. All right, bet. Because there are a lot of holes in the story. All right, so that is... Sorry, we got that information. I'm going to get out of that. What's up, y'all? Gotta- and go back to... Told y'all I got to put these videos out. Too. Sharing. Okay, so what time is it? It's 10, 11. I think, I'm not sure if Cali is three hours. And it's sad because I've been to Cali. I think they're three hours. So right now it's 7, 11. Mm-hmm. 7 11 so it's almost time for court um all righty so that oh, you brings- did this in the morning yep oh you are dedicated and you talking about you just we're gonna have a conversation you and i me and you as to why <laughs> the criminal case so the investigation went to the da the da say okay it went to the da on the 18th they gave the green light so criminal charges um, were brought and they got this criminal case on January 23rd, 2024. Both of these charges are misdemeanors. Um, it's nothing less than that. It's not a felony, nothing. So she was charged with assault with a deadly weapon, not a firearm because she used her rings. That's why she got charged with assault with a deadly weapon. And I figured that the second charge is battery on a person causing injury. So those- and you know what's crazy? I felt as though that battery charge was dropped because of that same reason, the whole co- consoling shit. I felt like it was dropped for that reason because a lawyer instantly, when I heard it, a lawyer could instantly use that. And granted, in this situation, her ass ain't got no lawyer because she don't like to pay people. But <laughs> had she had a lawyer, a lawyer, that that would have been the first argument. If I was her lawyer, my first argument. I need to know everything that happened. You know what I'm saying? And then I can definitely say, oh, they was trying to console you after they treated you like that. Not, consoling in general. To let y'all know something. An, an assault, I want to look up the, the definition of assault because cause I ain't going to be able to say it correctly. Hell, you probably can recite it right now, but <laughs> let me look at it. What what assault? Oh, dang, I was talking. I was on me. Oh, Lord. What? Yeah, so it's just... <laughs> Go ahead. It's a physical attack. Mm-hmm. I just seen that. That's what an assault, that's all it is. Now, consoling. So, okay, how can you put it in the in the terms of the law? 
don't touch people that well, don't want to be touched. About, <laughs> what, what do you do when you console somebody? You touch them. You touch them, I, I'm right? so sorry. This is when you do the arm wrap. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yes. And if a lot of people, well, we always advise clients when we get a case dismissed or something along those lines, we always tell them to get out of this type of situation or to prevent it from happening in the future. Always ask them, is it okay for me to touch you? Same thing in schools. A teacher just can't come up to touch you. They have to ask if it's okay to touch you. Right. Or not, you know, you're going to catch a case. Literally. They're going to think it's something else. Right. That's what I thought. All right, y'all, we're going to end this video because it's 35 minutes. We're going to end this first one. We're about to get into part two. Y'all let me know what y'all think down in the comment section below. Love y'all. Appreciate y'all. Hell yeah.